Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 124 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf, who just ran out of air. <laughs> I don't know with this whole breathing thing. Um, okay, so this podcast is going to be about what happens when we stop asking and start listening. This is interesting coming from a person who has endless curiosity and really asks a lot of questions. Now, I'm just going to ramble on as usual and let you know um, ahead of time that I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) If you're new to the podcast, uh, these are always a free for all. So we'll see. Lately, I've been practicing what in the mediumship world is called sitting in the power. And what we would call, uh, the rest of us probably would be um, just meditation. Meditation in the sense that um, a lot of people think meditation is checking out. But actually, insight meditation is You're closing your eyes and you're observing the mind. You're not trying to do anything with it. You're, you're observing and you're actually very alert. I think of it sort of like a cat nap. You're in dogs too sometimes, but, um, animals are, they look asleep, but they're really in that meditative state. The tiniest little sound and they flick an ear or they peep an eye open at you or a dog will, you know, wag their tail a little bit. Oh, I had to smother a yawn. It's, it's, uh, it's been a day where I accidentally fell asleep <laughs> in the evening and now I'm going to be up all night. So anyway, um, So that state of the meditative state of relaxed alertness, that world calls sitting in the power. The reason is when you're in that meditative alertness, that state of relaxed, very present consciousness, you're aware of your body, you're aware of the sounds around you, you're aware of your border collie brain running circles, chasing its tail, barking at the mailman, you know, you're aware of all of it, but you're and you're very present with it, but you're not trying to change it. It would be the same as observing a sunset or people watching in Las Vegas. You're just there. It's I, it, I, I hope that you know what I'm talking about. I'm struggling to find words and forgetting that probably most of you already know <laughs> what this means. When we're in that state of alertness, we feel we're aware of ourselves, especially if, you know, broken record here, if you have a daily practice of meditative alertness for five to 15 minutes a day, you're, you're aware of your own baseline energy, you're aware of the things that your brain is always blah, 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 woof, woof, woof about you, you're aware of it. So it's not that big a deal. You don't dive into the stories. You don't um, replay arguments because you already know that's what my brain does. So you don't have to worry about it too much. In the beginning, it's not quite that easy. But once you do it uh, every day for a while, you get a sense of yourself. The reason you're sitting in the power or doing this meditative alertness is so that you can feel when you've picked up energies that aren't your own, when you're... um, carrying other people's burdens and when someone who's on the other side is around you feel it Um, you're aware that it's a presence and you also feel your own guides you you don't have to worry like am I making this all up or uh, am I just talking to myself because um, you feel it you are aware of your energy and you're aware of when a presence that is not your energy is with you. So 
And this may be a little bit of advanced practice, but I I really, really can't recommend to you enough that you do this kind of meditation every day. Whether or not you want to talk to people on the other side or be available for that, you don't have to. You can remember, I mean, listen back to some of my earlier podcasts when I was like, you know what? I was 18. I didn't want nothing to do with nothing. And then I found out I was doing psychopomp work. I didn't have words for this stuff. I just, I just did what was there to be done. If somebody showed up in a session, I would tell them I feels like someone's here that that wants to pass on a message to you. But I didn't enjoy it. (laughs) <laughs> I wasn't like, hey, cool. Um, so and so's grandma came to her for Reiki session, and it was so cool. Like they told her all this stuff. And no, I was like, oh man, those fucking dead people, <laughs> and they won't shut up. So, um, I'm comfortable with it now. I've just come to terms with it. I wouldn't say that I still love it, but. I've accepted it. I've accepted it. It's a thing I can do and it hel- it's helpful to people and I'm just going to leave it at that. So I don't fight it anymore, but I, I am taking a, a few classes here and there just to see what's available in that world as far as teaching goes. A lot of it I already know, but it never hurts to go over the basics again. You know, never take a class where they start with the basics and get all assy about it. Oh my God, I've already done like a hundred million meditation classes. I totally don't need this. You know, you do. And, and if that's what you're saying, you really do because you got an arrogance problem and you need to brush up on your healer's humility. Ugh, don't get me started. So um, when we stop trying, that's when meditative states are the best. We're not trying. We're not in our ego or our mind or trying to check a box or have some sense of achievement. Like you get done and you're like, check, there's my meditation for the day. Look at me. I'm all spiritual and shit. You know, we're not doing any of that. And if you are doing it, just have a laugh at it and and move on. Just just sit there. So when you feel these other presences, you can ask, like, is this the woman who used to live in this house? Is this my dad? Although my dad's presence is unmistakable. Like when he's he's got big energy and when he shows up, like you don't have to wonder if that's him or not. So, um. But you can ask, like, is this my guide? And please don't bog down in, oh, my guide's an ascended master. Oh, my guide is, you know, Cleopatra or whatever. Your guide is your guide and you don't really need to know who they are and where they come from. And those labels and hierarchies that we put on stuff like that, like uh, Archangel versus regular angel. What the hell is that? We, you, you know, you you don't have a regular angel. You got to have an archangel. Look, you know, come on, be careful with that. That's the mind's um, <laughs> making simple things extra, super duper complicated, and it's not necessary. And it will stop you from really relaxing into that meditative state, like cats and dogs do, and animals do. Um, it's so powerful. So our tendency, and now this is the growth the edge growth from or the growth edge for me is the is our tendency is to go into meditation with a shit ton of questions and I'm so guilty about this well what about this and what do I need to know about that and where's a deck of cards so I can get some information but when we stop doing that when we go into that alert, present place with our energy open, our guides will come and tell us what we need to know. They don't need our questions. Our questions in that context actually are getting in the way. This is the information that's been coming forward all week, all week, like it's Friday. It's is it Wednesday? No, hell no. It's Tuesday night. It's not even the middle of the week. But the last two days, nope, sorry. 
Saturdays when I first heard somebody say that and it just blasted open this awareness in me of how many times I'm I'm meditating to try and get something. This is so mind-based, right? I need to get something. I need to have all the information. Now, why do we do that? Because we're afraid. The world is a scary place sometimes, and we're not over, you know, COVID trauma and pandemic. Um, you know, we're not. <laughs> how could we be over it? It's uh, still happening. So, we're scared and we get nervous and we ask a lot of questions that are mind based. Like, when is this going to happen? How do I change this? What do I do? Uh, you know, when am I going to find love? When, why are dating apps so horrible and terrifying? <laughs> Forget it with the dating apps. <sighs> Whatever. I don't even want to talk about it. Um, it's, it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. I have to stop thinking about it. But and th but that is something that I'll ask about. Like, well, you know, I don't what I don't know what to do here. I say that a lot about a lot of things. Like this area doesn't seem to shift. How do I make it happen? Really, how do I change myself? Who do I need to be? to resonate with the things that I would, I think anyway, that I would enjoy having in my life. How do I do it? You know, show me what I need to know. Show me what I need to be aware of. Bring to it to my awareness. Okay. None of this is bad at all. It's just, I feel like there's another, uh, uh, there's an opportunity for us to um, have a little more receptivity, which really that's what we've all been going for, right? With embodiment and, you know, checking in with our human design authority and our physical sensations and not letting our mind talk us out of our gut feelings or, you know, not waiting, um, not rushing into things anymore and letting things develop and come to us rather than us always chasing everything around and trying to make things happen. But now I think we've got some bad habits about, I need to fix this. We've talked about this a lot. Like a lot of our um, things we say and do are centered around the if this, then that. If I had this, then I would feel. If this would change, then I would have. You know, it's if this, then that. Like I don't want to do it uh, unless I'm going to get the result my mind thinks I should have. Like, I don't want to say yes to a job that's not perfect or whatever, because, uh, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. We know all the things. So when we go into meditation with no agenda, what I'm hearing is that our guides will tell us what we need to know. We, they don't need our questions. We other people need our questions and we need our questions. Like our mind needs our questions. And if you're a projector, you have a lot of projected channels in your human design chart. You really do need questions. Generators need questions to, you know, access their wisdom. Uh, it, it, questions help us when we are being human. But our guides don't need those questions. And all that is certainly doesn't need questions or laundry lists of things that we think we should have or ways that we think we should be or changes in our body or whatever it is we're, um, you know, <laughs> whatever we're fixated on for the moment. I, you know, the spirit world doesn't need to know that. They already know that. Your soul already knows that. Your guides already know. They already know. So maybe asking questions helps you clarify, is this what I really want? Or is this something I think I should want? Do I really want a seven figure income? And do I really want to do all the things or even a six figure income? Hell, for some of us, a five figure income would be pretty rocking, you know? So um, do I really need that? Or is this what the bro marketers want me to believe that I need? Do I really need another 
whatever. Do I really need this thing that I, does my body really need to change? Or do I just think that it does? So questioning yourself can be helpful. But we don't have to tell, we don't have to question our guides. They know what we need to know. The problem is, I don't think we shut up long enough to hear them. Definitely, if we're going into meditation and with a long, long list of questions and things that we're trying to find answers to, uh, we're not really available to hear them in the same way as if when we go into meditation with no agenda at all. And you know why I think a lot of us don't or haven't up until this point. I know that this is super conscious for me lately since Saturday. So I know that this is the practice I'll take up. Um, I've been doing it and really enjoying it. Um, and I'm able to hear like B and B in the gang. I can hear them a whole lot more clearly. I'm aware of, um, you know, different energies a whole lot faster when I'm not asking a bunch of questions. So when we, I think we don't do that because we don't trust. We ask a lot of questions and we do a lot of mind um, things because we don't trust that we'll have what we need when we need it, whether that's information or resources. We, we're always afraid that we have to figure it out. We've got to figure it out so that the bad thing can't grab us. <laughs> you know, like trying to get too much information is if I have all this information, then the bad thing can't get me. If I have, you know, six months of food, then the bad thing won't happen or can't get me if it does happen. Uh, we're so fearful, right? Pardon me yawning on the podcast. Um, when we trust that we'll know what we need to know when we need to know it, then we're able to rest in the presence. We're able to go into that meditative state and really relax at a bone deep level to really unwind and let go without the fear driven stress of trying to get answers from our team invisible. Team invisible doesn't, you know, they will tell us what we need to know when we need to know it, when we're available for it. And what I'm discovering is what I think is happening is I'm not really available if I have an agenda. I'm not really available if I'm asking questions because I'm afraid of what's going to happen if I don't know all the things. If I don't have all the answers, if I can't figure things out in advance, that's all fear-based mind hooey, you know, <laughs> it's all, it's hogwash. It's a bunch of nonsense. And that's okay. We don't have to feel bad about it. We're human for fuck's sake. I mean, that's what we do. And that's okay. It's also okay to go, you know what? I think I'd like to have a different experience. I think I'd like to trust that when I need to know, I'll know. When I need to have the thing, I'll have it. When the person who's going to love me is available and I'm available, he'll show up or he'll make himself known. I don't need to keep trying to figure it out or trying to do anything with it. If I trust, if I trust that the things I do for myself and the mindset work I do and all the, you know, experiences I give myself is more than enough, then I don't have to feel any anxiety. When I take an inventory of my life and notice and express appreciation to having a beautiful roof over my head, having a reliable vehicle, having uh, animal companions, having, you know, birds to feed and stray cats to yeah 
Well, I don't know how appreciative I am of that. But you know, when I really am present in my life, I don't have to ask a lot of questions. So I have to wonder now, what have we been missing all this time? What have our guides been so patiently waiting to tell us all about, but we haven't stopped asking questions long enough to hear them? If we're in question energy, even if we're not asking questions, we can't hear them. So the podcast previously, number 123, Why Do Bad People Get Good Things with Law of Attraction, that I talked a lot about the foundation of this in that podcast about resonance. If we're not, if we're in fear, energy and anxiety, you know, we're in the anxiety soup. We can't, we're not resonant with our guides. So we can't really hear them clearly. We might get some glimmers and some images and whatnot, but we can't really perceive everything they're trying to show us because we're not resonant we're not available for peaceful, loving communication because we don't really feel peaceful and loving. So we can't really hear it. In that podcast, I talked about how I can't hear uh, the other side if I'm in a grumpy place or I have anxiety or whatever. I don't I hear air quote, here clearly because I'm not, the door's not open, right? That alert meditation opens the door so that if there's something we need to know, whoever's available can pass that message on. But we have to be resonant. We have to be responsible for our energy field and, and, you know, how we're taking care of ourselves or not And we have to be responsible for making the time and the space for that communication to happen. It's not their job to make us listen. And they absolutely don't do that. I'm very triggered and suspicious when someone says, my guide said it has to be this way. That is a mind statement, and that is a big alarm bell for me. My guide said it has to be this way, or my guides told me that I have to do this. They don't do that. They don't. Everything is optional. The repetitive message I get from B is it is all optional. And if it's to your benefit to make a certain choice, they'll tell you. And then they'll tell you it's still optional. So there's optional and optimal. Yeah, it's optimal if you make this decision. It's optimal if you lay off sedating substances. They give people, you know, obviously everybody gets a slightly different message, but there'll be themes of for weeks it was stop using sedating substances, whatever that means for you, whatever way you're sedating yourself, stop it. (laughs) Knock it off. It's not helping. So it's a similar message, like to be quiet, to really relax into that peace that passeth all understanding, the very deep, alert stillness, that sense of being deeply rooted into the ground to be in the root ball of the trees where things are happening, but they're slow and they're silent And there's space available for you to receive every bit of information that you need to receive. And if you don't receive any, then there's no need for it. It's very rare that guides actually say something specific. They're often just providing comfort, encouragement, a little hint of, hey, this might be interesting, or, oh, you might want to check this out. Or, oh, that person might be out of alignment with themselves, so maybe you don't want to be around them or work with them. Um, But it's still, it's optional. It's all optional. 
We don't need to worry so much. We don't need to ask questions that are meant to make our mind feel better because you know what? The answers to those questions, the relief we feel lasts approximately 2.5 seconds. <laughs> right? You get the answer. Everything's okay. And you're like, oh, thank God. Everything's okay. And then five minutes later, you're like, oh, shit. How am I going to pay the mortgage? <laughs> What am I going to do about this other thing that you just got the answer? Everything was fine. You know, we can't maintain it. But everything is well. And I think it's a good idea. Or let's say, I think it's a great opportunity to take the next few weeks or months and not Take a bunch of questions. Put down the oracle cards for now. Put down the tarot cards. Just as an experiment. Y'all let me know if you do this. Because that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be consulting any kind of oracle. I'm not going to be asking uh, any particular kind of question. Other than the one what needs to be that I got from Karen Curry Parker, what needs to be healed, aligned, released and brought to my awareness. And I stopped there. So it, it, it has been what needs to be healed, reliant, or whatever brought to my awareness for me to fill in the blank, for me to have fill in the blank, for me to be fill in the blank. But I'm changing it to what needs to be healed, released, aligned, and brought to my awareness with no further words attached to that. Like, I'm here. What needs to be brought to my awareness? I'm here. I'm listening. I'm asking one question. What needs to be brought to my awareness? And then you wait. And if something comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you start to practice trust. We, I start to practice trusting that if there's something that needs to be brought to my awareness, it will be brought to my awareness in the very second that I need it. Not a second before, not a second after. When I need to know it, I'll know it. When I need to make a decision, I'll make a decision. When I need to get creative with opportunities in my life, then I will get creative with them. When I need to stop and slam the door on something that's happening, then I'll do that. I don't have to think about it ahead of time. What do you think about that? What if you went on a um, divination diet? Oh, let's call it that, a divination diet. <clears throat> what kind of diet are you on? Mm, I'm on a divination diet. Like uh, I put all my oracle cards away and I'm not asking a bunch of questions. <laughs> I love it. Divination diet. That's what I'm going to do. So you enjoy me or not, obviously just play with these concepts and see what you think. But um, what's today's date? Oh, dur! It's the big special day, right? Two, two, twenty, two, twenty, two, two, lots of twos. Um, yeah, I think I'm for the rest of the month, a whopping seven days <laughs> or it's six days. I think for the rest of the month, then I'm just going to practice sitting in the power or doing my silent meditation daily practice without a question other than I'm here and what needs to be brought to my awareness. I'm making myself available to hear you. So anyway, that's kind of fun. Let's see how that goes. And, uh, you know, me, I'll report back in a week or two or a month, whatever, whenever it comes forward and comes clear. So um, experiment, see what you think. And, and in the meantime, think less, feel more. And you know where to find me on one of the websites, thatmichellewolf.com or thewolfcodes.com. Dot com if you need copywriting and website and sales pages or LinkedIn bios or things of that sort. The wolfcodes.com is where all that stuff is being housed. 
All right, my dears, sending you so much love. We'll talk to you later.